Welcome to the Business Owner Elevation Podcast, the show that's designed for coaches, consultants, and expert business owners that are looking to achieve higher levels of productivity and profitability, where we share battle-tested tactics and innovative ideas that guarantee to elevate your business rapidly. Brought to you from the award-winning Best UK Business Podcast in 2015. Without further ado, here's your hosts, Robert Dean Smith and Leon Street. Hello and welcome to another edition of the SB Elevation Podcast with me, your host, Robert Dean Smith the first, the marketing manifesto guy. And from the other side of the West Midlands, my main man, the co-host with the dulcet tones, Mr. Leon Street in the house. We are raring to go. We have another special interview today for you guys. But before we get into that Elevation Nation, how have you been, Rob? I have been, I've been, I've been snow, hey, snowed under, summered over, rained over, <laughs> lots of projects, lots of things rolling out with our next event and a lot of copywriting projects. Yeah, too. we've we've got a lot of things on at the moment, which is good, rather to have more than less. Yes. And the other thing is, and I think this is going to segue us into today's guest, you mm-hmm. were doing some video recording or something, weren't you, a yeah, day or so ago? Yeah, yes, I was in London, so it was one of my, one of my clients in London, in, in, in Holborn, in that kind of a legal ego barrister district you know <laughs> wigs and all that kind of stuff and um yeah we're just we're just doing a, a, a basically an explainer video um for a client awesome, so awesome. Went, down well, went down well good work rob yeah. so how do we segue into who we have today well we have waiting in the wings a video marketing expert and i want to welcome to the show mr tom breeze how are you doing tom very good. I love the energy, guys. It's amazing. Great, great. Awesome. Hey, 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 Leon, Leon, I've got a song already for Tom, man. Summer breeze <laughs> makes me feel fine. <laughs> oh, Tom's awesome. Awesome, 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 awesome. I like so, it. guys, so we can get into this summer breeze, I'm going to tell you a bit more about Tom Breeze. He's the founder of video advertising agency, Viewability, building thousands of video and ad campaigns for clients from many industries across the world, testing and tracking all of the results at Viewability. They have a unique financial model and only getting paid when they deliver leads and customers for their clients. No monthly fee, no percentage of ad spend, just paid on results. Now, this is a big thing. And the reason why we have Tom is, I believe, the first time we both, became aware of Tom was at the Frank Kern event just over a year ago, wasn't it, in London, Rob? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And he shared some really great insights and I loved his approach, his delivery. And Rob reached out to him and we finally have him on the show. So welcome, Tom. Thank you very much. It's great to um, see that the connections all work together and the networking all happens. It's it's always good to see that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I want to kick us off with the interview. And today, guys, we're going to do a deep dive because Tom is an expert in video marketing. We want to touch on some of the things and tap into his knowledge around this subject. So before we get into that, I just want to ask you, Tom, is there an elevated success quote or mantra or key principles that keep you on track headed towards success in what you do? Do you know what there is? It's, it's, I'm very, very scientific with the way that I do things. So I'm always looking at the numbers and always looking at kind of like specifically what methods work most efficiently. Mm-hmm. So processes and uh, getting systems in place to make sure that we kind of keep on delivering really good results is kind of what it's all about, really. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Fantastic. Well, Tom, let, let's let's move on then, because obviously you're known as in the industry circles as the video, you know, the video YouTube ad guy and probably Facebook ad guy as well. But what was your kind of route into the whole marketing world? Because I'm, I'm sure you probably didn't start off in video. So if you can just give us a little bit of your backstory and then lead us how you, you know, got into more the YouTube side of things. Yeah, for sure. So when I first started getting into business, really, um, I actually came from a psychology background. So um, I studied psychology at university carried on doing my master's in psychology as well. From there, I learned how to work with people on one-to-one basis. So I studied on kind of like how to kind of train up an NLP. So mm-hmm. that's neuro-linguistic programming. Um, I did a bit of hypnotherapy and stuff and did some timeline therapy as well. And 
through all that training that I went through off the back of all the psychology stuff that I did, I started working one to one in London with a lot of people who are dealing with like anxiety related issues. I was really good at it, in fact. Um, and I started working with a lot of people that were really anxious and fearful of speaking in public. And mm. it was just uh, an area that I knew pretty well because I once was petrified of ever speaking in public and, right. and I overcame it and kind of dealt with it and got through it. So that was a kind of a, it's a really nice thing to be able to teach people how to tell to do the same thing. Yeah. And through that business angle, I started promoting my business more and more. This is really before the days of video could ever be put onto a website. Sure. I remember I kind of I went down uh, back to my home in Eastbourne and I actually stole my video camera from my um, my parents at the time. <laughs> so I was like, right, I need to I need to see how I can use this thing. And um, it was onto a tape, so it had to be filmed onto a tape, and I had to use another bit of hardware to take the film off the tape mm. and put it on digitally. Then uploading it to it was it was Viddler at the time because YouTube hadn't even really got yeah. going just then. Yeah. And then I embedded that video onto my website, and I carried on running ads from Google AdWords like I was before. So I got relatively good at Google AdWords. Yeah. Stuck a video on my landing page. My conversions in terms of the number of people inquired to who wanted to work with me tripled overnight it went from seven percent of people that visited my site leaving their name and email to 22 right. percent and i was like wow there's something in this video stuff <laughs> so i started selling more and more through video i started doing a video uh, to sell a workshop i started doing video to sell more one-to-one -one clients and started communicating with video more and more then a lot of my business contacts would start asking me how I do video. So they would have to do some sort of internal presentation or they'd they want to know how to deliver their message on video. And it soon started evolving into more video than it was how to speak in public. And the great thing is I was able to start picking up some international clients as well because video meant that it would be an international business as opposed to just people working with me one-to-one -to -one -one. in the UK. And then it, it's kind of just evolved and evolved and evolved to the point where I started up a new business just purely focusing on working with clients on their video stuff. And we did a bit of production in the early days, did a bit of SEO in the early days. Yeah. But then I just started playing around with some YouTube advertising and the amount of traffic we could generate for a client at the costs, at like they're so cheap in comparison to hiring lots of staff and mm -hmm. trying to get kind of huge SEO systems in place. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, we can just run this video at this price, which is so much cheaper, and we're just getting a much better result for the client. And it was one of those decision moments, like a bit of a breakthrough. I was like, do you know what? I'm just going to screw what we've been doing before. Let's just really focus on the advertising angle yeah. now. And that was about three years ago now. We've yeah, we've gone from strength to strength. We've kind of just really pulled all of our, our skills and our efforts into video advertising, and in particular, YouTube advertising. Mm -hmm. And we just are able to kind of like I am come from a, that scientific background as I say so we measure everything we do we track everything we do we've learned almost like the laws of what works mm -hmm. so then when clients are like hey I want to run some video ads we've normally got some education from other clients what's worked what hasn't worked and so we can kind of put together some campaigns that just work really efficiently and yeah so we, we launched it off the back of the success we we're having off it and that's where we work on the cost per acquisition model um, so we work on a we'll only get paid when we deliver results for clients and it works really well because it's, it feels like we're working with our clients as opposed to for our clients, yeah. which is a big differentiator psychologically from our standpoint. So like, actually, I'm actually so excited working with our clients, whereas when the client says, I want this done tomorrow, I don't like that. <laughs> so mm, yeah. um, much mm. better to like, work with them and, and strategize with them and, and think of some really cool stuff we could do together. And it's just a, it proves it's much better working that way. Okay, fantastic. So you you, you mentioned something, um, and I'm going to let Leon come in in a bit. You mentioned something that you've worked at the law. So I like this. I've already got a, a headline: the laws of YouTube here. So, <laughs> I mean, what what would be some of the like, you know, for a newbie, kind of developing or looking at using YouTube? What would you say are some key fundamentals or laws, as you just said? I'm using your terminology here. Using your terminology, here, Tom. That yep. that somebody should look at to use or, or should be aware of. Cool. Okay. So, so let's look at this from like the 30,000 view point um, mm -hmm. of, of how YouTube ads work. Look at it for a, a business owner who's kind of getting into or thinking about potentially running some video ads. Yeah. The, when we look at any advertising, we always look at the moment that someone's in. So this is kind of like this pause on the psychology background that I have, but it's, it's understanding 
your mindset and why you would even be on YouTube in the first place. So let's say, for example, let's say, for example, you're walking down the street one day and you see a billboard on the side of the road and that billboard sparks your interest and you're like, oh, my God, I, I love that. Like, I want to find out more about that particular product. It's very mm-hmm. rare for that to happen with billboards, right? Not very often we'll see that. Mm-hmm. But what that's doing is it's, it's trying to stimulate a desire in you. And yeah. that's what it's trying to do. It's trying to say, hey, look at this. Don't you now want this product? Here's how to find out more. And it's trying to stimulate that. And that's a moment of, of, stimu- of, of stimulus. Now, that happens with things like billboards and certain other types of advertising, like TV advertising as well. Or it happens in your natural day-to-day life. Like, I've now got two very young boys. They're like, one's just about to turn two and one's like um, eight months old at the moment. When we found out we were going to have the second child in quite uh, quite kind of like close together, probably a little bit closer than my wife and I would have liked. Mm. <laughs> but um, when that when that news came out... Everything the- works as it should. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But when that when that second when we found out we were pregnant for the second time at that mo- moment in time for me I was like wow I potentially need a new car a new house um, mm. definitely need a new buggy and all the <laughs> things you you would think you'd need but that's my moment of stimulus to now desiring more products or more mm-hmm. kind of like things I would sure. need. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So you'll have these moments in your life or you'll see things that will spark and and have this stimulus. Now that's one moment, but. You, move, you very quickly move into the second moment, which is the moment of intent. So now, now that I know I need a new buggy uh, for the kids, I'm now in a moment of intent where I'll go online and start searching for information about the best buggies for two kids or the best buggies for two kind of toddlers. And so I'm in that moment of intent there. And that's the second moment of five. But that's where you're advertising on YouTube. You're advertising when people are searching for solutions. Mm. So let's kind of like take this into consideration for different types of businesses. Let's say, for example, you're a chiropractor or an mm-hmm. osteopath and you help people with their back pain. Mm-hmm. Well, in that scenario, you'll know that people will be, might be going to YouTube for things like how to deal with back pain or how to overcome lower back pain. And so you can get in front of people at the moment they're trying to watch videos about how to release their back pain. And you can do that in your local area. You can get in front of people at that in their moment of intent. So in their moment where they're looking for information about how they can re- like relieve their back pain, you can get in front of them at that specific moment in time. So you haven't had to spark off this stimulus. You haven't had to sp- spark off this desire. You're basically just being there and just turning up and being useful with your ad. Yeah. And so you can actually just have a really nice relationship with your potential viewers because um, you can say, hey, look, if you've got lower back pain, which you know they have, you can say, here's what you want to do. You want to relax it by doing this, that and the other. So give them some sort of exercise to do. And then as the chiropractor or osteopath, you'd be like, but this is just the, the start of repairing your back. The chances are there may be more damage. There may be things you need to look at. And we can provide you with the first diagnostic session if you just click this link, go to our website, we've got a special deal on right now, and you can come in and come and see us. Yeah, yeah. And so it's kind of like you don't have to be a real genius to create these types of ads. It's more a case of just being there mm-hmm. and being useful and then having a natural call to action in the video itself. But that's just osteopaths and chiropractors. We do kind of international campaigns for lots of different types of businesses. Mm -hmm. But what the first thing to do is always try and understand that moment and only really serve that one moment. Mm -hmm. So if someone's looking, let's say, for example, to how to create a Facebook page and you can help Mm -hmm. them with that, create, create a video about like a little mini tutorial about how to do it. And then say, if you want to find out more, we're running a webinar this evening. Why don't you register this evening for the whole webinar? And then obviously you can sell your services on the back of that webinar. But it's, it's identifying that one moment that you know that you can help with. And then that's the kind of the key part. That's like, once you identify the moments your customers are going through, you can then really start mapping out what you want to say, what's your message for that moment. And so it doesn't have to become like this big TV ad campaign where you create one video that's going to cost you thousands of pounds to do. Yeah. <clears throat> this can be on an iPhone, just think, right, this person wants to like relieve their back pain. This person wants to create a Facebook page. Whatever it is you do as a business, then you know you can just say, right, let's run ads to purely those people. And that's the beauty of YouTube. You can really target in on those people. Awesome. I think there's some really great structured approach there. And I think more to the point, Elevation Nation, everybody listening right now, it's something you can implement. I think in particular, the the one thing that I remember about the presentation that you gave at the event, Tom, 
you mentioned, I believe, something to do with like a 22 second strategy when it comes to creating like video ads. And that seemed to stick for me. And I think it was more to do with the formatting of a, a, a an ad on YouTube in the sense of that you have like an initial five seconds and then after that. And then there was a, a specific approach that you gave as to how the ad or the video ad can then be created. And I think and what I'm getting in the sense of your laws of what works is that, you know, everything is systemized in, in the sense, like you say, you've got this structure, what you've tried and tested before. And to be fair, it's something that I also implemented in a few ads that I create. And I think actually it works really well. So everybody listening, what, I, what I'm getting to is that I think you should really pay attention to these tips. And it's definitely something you can take on board. I think in terms of what you're doing with especially YouTube, because obviously that's your specialist niche. Are there any key things to bear in mind? Because you mentioned like CPA in, in the sense of how you were cost per action model. Is there anything specific to advertising on YouTube, whether you're a startup or established marketer that you should really be paying attention to when it comes to YouTube ads? Maybe, you know, YouTube ad variations or is there anything that they should look out for where they can get, you know, not, rather than a quick win where they can get better results? Yeah, of course. So um, the best the way that we would run a campaign would be, first of all, obviously, the first stage is to identify those moments that your yeah. customers are going through. Mm -hmm. Then what we'd do is we'd say, right, well, what's the message that we want to present to those people? The The YouTube platform is really helpful in identifying how you can get in front of people. One of the ways it shows you is that if you run like a pre-roll ad, which is called an in-stream ad on mm -hmm. YouTube, that's the terminology they'll use, the, the beauty of those ads is that you only pay when someone decides to watch past 30 seconds of your video or decides to click back to your website. So if someone watches like 29 seconds of the video and then thinks, actually, do you know what? I'm going to press skip ad now. If that's to happen, you won't pay anything. Um, you won't pay kind of a, a dime. It's kind of like it's, it's free for you completely, which means that the only time you have to spend money is when someone's actually really engaged with your message. Mm which is beautiful, right? Now, we've, we do take this to another level where we would try and get the video done by 22 seconds, as you quite rightly say, mm -hmm. um, because then um, if we're able to deliver our message in 22 seconds, which is a bit of a challenge, it's not mm -hmm. easy to get it done in 22 yeah. seconds. <laughs> but, but that said, if, if you are strategic about it and you think, right, what's, what really do I want to say? What's the one thing I need to get across to really resonate with my audience and tell them that I've got a webinar that's tonight or here's how to find out more? Then mm -hmm. it's not too difficult. But you would run it for 22 seconds, give your call to action, and then you would almost like edit it, edit the video that you upload in such a way where it kind of holds for another, let's say, kind of like 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like it may go a bit dark. It might just have the button appear there, but it looks like someone's pressed pause, but it hasn't. It, the video continues playing, but it's just almost like a static image that would hold for 15 seconds. And the reason being is because then... From the 22 second mark up until 30 seconds, it's kind of almost like dead time. Nothing's really happening mm, in the video, mm. but you're forcing someone into some sort of action. You're forcing them to say, right, either click the button to go back to our website and find out more or press the skip ad button. <laughs> click one of the two so it's still free for you. <laughs> Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. Um, you, you kind of like don't let people just like kind of go past the 30 seconds and just cost you money for no reason. That that's like a really good way to kind of drive leads very cost effectively. And it's a great way for small business owners to when every penny counts, as it always does, yeah. but when every penny counts for your advertising, you don't have the hugest budgets in the world. That can be a really good way of um, driving traffic and keeping the costs very low mm -hmm. and, and know that you're only paying for quality leads. But then with those ads that you create, you would advertise and this is the great thing about it. You can say, right, I only want to advertise on these specific videos. And you can actually just grab the URLs of the videos you want to advertise on. So say, for example, you've got competitors that are doing yeah. particularly well and they've got lots of videos out there. You could, if they have their advertising turned on, and in the vast majority of cases, well, most, most often do, then you can have your ads run in front of your competitors' videos. So say, for example, they're just about to watch a competitor's video, they press play, 
your pre-roll ad would appear in front of it and say, and you can say whatever you like, obviously, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and you know yeah. you're getting in front of a good audience. But you can collect all the videos that are like relevant for your topic, relevant for your uh, content. And so you know that when someone's going to YouTube looking for how to do something, want to know more about a particular topic, maybe they're looking up a review video of a particular um, type of product, you can have your video appear just before that and say, hey, look, if you're in the market for buying a buggy, which in my case I would be, I'll be yeah. reviewing all these product videos about buggies. <laughs> and they say, hey, look, if you're looking to buy a buggy, we have developed uh, the newest type of buggy on the market that um, is designed in such a way to really help dads because <laughs> you can target by males and females. Yeah. Um, you can say really help dads. I don't know, whatever the benefits would be of, of, a, of a buggy. But mm -hmm. have a video that's like that really talks to me. And I'm like, wow, that's exactly what I want. Mm -hmm. I'm much more likely to click that because let's face it, most videos on YouTube aren't exactly what we want. But when yeah. an ad really talks to us and says, here's what we've got for you and come and, have, come and check it out, we are so much more likely to go and kind of like click that and go back to the website to find out more about mm -hmm. that. So I think there you're looking for the easy fold away into the boot buggy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Easy for Yeah, very true. That's it. Yeah, yeah. straight in, no fuss. You can get to drive in. That's yeah. it. I think my biceps might have got like three times the size. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that's a natural when you have to carry the baby chair, <laughs> the car seat. Yeah, everything goes cool. back. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, again, I think these these tips that mm. you know you're you're laying out these laws. I think they're they're very poignant in the sense of you know be being able to get onto YouTube as a small business and marketing yourself effectively. And for everybody listening, that one was the 22 second pre-roll law, just so you know. Yeah. <laughs> which, which I love because essentially if they don't, if they don't click on a website and they skip, you've kind of had some free branding or some mm -hmm. free, you know, free advertising. I mean, you can't beat that elevation nation with a stick or a bat. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, that's just great. That's money in the bank near enough. That's, that's great right. branding. Wonderful. That's that's a that's an awesome strategy. Thank you for, mm. very much for sharing that, Tom. What what I was going to allude to was the types of because I think Leon mentioned the formatting a little bit, but you see all kinds of different video, kind of well adverts on YouTube, and I was I wanted to basically get a handle on what do you think is working best? Is it more of a kind of talking head? Is it a mixture of animation? I'm 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 just trying to see what you know is it a jujitsu style of video? What do you think is working right now? What's what's going well? from your testing and tracking, Tom? Yeah, okay, cool. So from a, I mean, we tend to work with the uh, smaller business owners and medium-sized yeah. businesses. We don't get to work with, well, we don't want to necessarily work with the massive, great big brands. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they've got a different agenda, typically. They're very mm -hmm. much more interested in brand awareness. They're looking to get like as many eyeballs as possible and how many times that video gets seen. That's what they base their success yeah. on. Yeah. Whereas we come from a scientific background, so we make sure that, we we look at it as like we're buying customers. That's what we're doing. And yeah. we've got to make sure that the cost of buying that avatar, that customer is cheaper than than what we're, what we're getting. So we're making a profit all the time, right? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of most important. It's always based on return on investment. And we've got to drive those results to make sure we make money for our clients. Now, with with any small, small to medium-sized business owner who's um, looking to get onto video, I, I would often say start with a video that you can feel comfortable doing. So if it's a, um, if you're a business owner and you think, do you know what, I'm actually quite good at presenting. I think me on camera would work pretty well. I would always encourage a business owner to do that because yeah. having that face there, psychologically, we remember faces. It's a great branding tool to have a face of a business. And it, that's why so many like celebrity and celebrities are endorsing different products because it feels like, wow, wow we recognize that person. We trust in that person. If they say it's good, it must be good. Mm -hmm. But you, you're almost halfway there with the fact that like you are the face of the business. If that can happen, great, go for that. Yeah. And whether it be talking head, whether it be kind of like the presenter kind of speaking in different ways. Maybe you're in the studio. Like I've got a very successful video that I use for my business, which is me presenting, but I'm presenting alongside a TV screen and the TV screen is like got my slides on it as I speak. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and, and that for, for good reason, that makes people feel like as soon as they get there for that video, it feels like they're going to learn something. Cause if, yeah. if, if as soon as you've yeah. got like a TV there, it's like, Oh, maybe this isn't an ad. Maybe this is a tutorial video, which it typically mm -hmm. is. Um, but it's an ad wrapped up in a tutorial, so to speak. Yeah. 
So there's always uh, clever ways of creating the video. One way we've done it, we've done it with a client of ours um, who's a very well-known speaker in the UK, a guy called Andy Harrington. With his with his videos, we actually went down to one of his live events and filmed him with an iPhone on stage. And he had like a flip chart in the background. He had his, his, had his audience in the, in the crowd as well. Immediately as we started filming that, very quickly we'd have a, a kind of a, a shot of the audience. We'd then have a, um, him talking with, a, uh, with a, like his a flip chart in the background. And so it immediately feels like you've got to be learning something from yeah. that video. And you do. He gives really good value and good content in the video itself. And then there's a natural progression to take the call to action and go back to his website to sign up for his yeah, I think it's selling a free book in that scenario. Mm-hmm. So I would say if you can be the presenter, go for it. Cause I think it's just, mm-hmm. it, that works really well that way. Um, but sometimes you might have a face for radio or you might, um, <laughs> <laughs> or sometimes you just might not be the best presenter in the world. Um, yeah. or sometimes you might have a very complicated thing to talk about or your product yeah. doesn't necessarily need to be presented by a person. So let's say for example, you were selling some sort of solar panel, product then yeah. it might be better just to use like footage of a solar panel being installed or mm-hmm. animation for example of how it all works mm-hmm. so if there's something that's very complicated to explain as a business sometimes it's best to use animation and, right. and wrap it up in some sort of story but um what we tend to advise is that if it's more of a kind of a, a simple message in the video itself and you can be the presenter go that route because it's People resonate with people all the time. And mm-hmm. if you create a really good video of you, people are going to stop and listen to what you have to say. And it doesn't look like an ad either, typically, it, um, unless you start off with the classic lunchtime TV ad slot type <laughs> video ads. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, yeah. Don't do that way. Don't try and be like the salesperson. Um, instead, think about the way that I always think about things whenever I create an ad is to think, right, who's the customer? What's their moment? Now, if we were to sit down one to one with that person, how would we communicate? What would we talk about? And if you can identify the way you would deliver that, that's what you want to try and get across in the video because you're not talking to a big audience when it comes to video advertising. You're, you're having many, many little one-to-one conversations. Mm-hmm. And it's really important to think that you're talking to someone and they don't want to be sold to. They want to buy from you. And that's a big difference in video advertising. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I've I've got a question because you've you've been pretty successful in the sense you've you've done many ad campaigns. You've done something like seventeen hundred plus video advertising campaigns, Tom. And you've also alluded to a question I was going to ask you. Actually, what should people avoid? And you've stated that quite clearly, which is great. And you have then mentioned quite quickly software setup. You said you had an iPhone. Now I've got a question, which is for people listening right now. Should they be thinking about, you know, should I get, you know, a digital SLR? Should I get a video camera? Should I use an iPhone or a smartphone equivalent? You know, what are your thoughts on the devices to get started if somebody is going to be presenting two videos? It's going to be face to camera rather than, you know, narrating over a presentation. So I think that one of the biggest thing that's happened in the last year or so is the fact that iPhones now have become very very high quality mm-hmm. um, i know that I, I, when i say iphones pretty much any smartphone now has a yep. very good camera on it so mm-hmm. most of them will do it's just that like i've got an iphone and it works <laughs> just it rolls off the tongue very good branding from the apple yes yeah. <laughs> yeah. um just that with the um if you've got a good microphone with it so um mm-hmm. i think the road smart lab i think it's called mm-hmm. i think it costs like 20 dollars or something it's not expensive yeah. You can plug that in and you can get very good audio and very good visuals with an iPhone. So really you can get set up very effectively. And I think that iPhones are great for, it's like an extension of you, right? So like an iPhone can do everything you need it to do for your business and more. So it's always a great asset to have. But Mm -hmm. some of our most successful clients will create videos using their iPhones. So I wouldn't, I would always recommend go for the simplest route that you still know will do the job very well. So I remember when I first started doing video, I had to do the clunky way with the tapes and things. And that was mm. the good old days. And then I don't know if you remember the flip cameras. I think they've gone out of business yeah, now, yeah, but um, yeah, yeah. I had a flip Mino HD camera that was po- really poor for audio quality, but the simplest thing in the world, because as soon as you finish, you just press the, the flip button and the USB cable came out and you just stick it into your computer and you're off and running. I literally created a video a day 
for, a, well, I don't know how long it was, but my YouTube channel and my Vimeo channel, I had so many videos. I've got over a thousand videos there of like tips and advice for speakers and how to speak in public and things. The production of how many videos I got out there was amazing. Um, and then I thought to myself, do you know what? I'm now going to upgrade things. I'm going to go and buy a really fancy DSLR camera mm-hmm. with with the full wax of kind of like audio with the Sennheiser mics. Um, I spent about £2,000 on a setup of that. And then I bought the lights as well. So that probably set me back, back about £2,500. Mm-hmm. And it looks amazing, but the setup is exhausting. Yeah. And um, I just never got anything done. I never did the videos any longer. And that's the thing that like the procrastination or really the kind of the the mental capacity to set it all up and get it all done um, Mm -hmm. puts a whole new level of pressure on it. And so I'm very much of the mindset of saying, do you know what, iPhones, if you've got a good setup with a a, uh, tripod microphone and your iPhone – and you can and you can start creating content. Go that route because you you'll learn how to do it really well, and it'll, it won't cost you a huge amount. Considering if if you imagine the iPhone would be free because you already have one, yeah. um, yes, that's going to be kind of like set you back maybe a hundred dollars with with a light, and you're good mm-hmm. to go, um, mm-hmm. and you'll create some really good stuff. Um, I I often use my webcam for many mm-hmm. different videos I'd run. And so that, again, doesn't cost me hardly anything. My screen of my laptop is normally a good enough light to actually kind of light me as, yeah. I, as I speak. Yeah. So I've done that many times. And every now and again, when I want to create a really cool video, I'll go into the studio and it'll cost me a couple of grand to do that. But mm-hmm. that, that's far, like, that, like, I very rarely go and do that. But when I've got something I really want to um, promote out there that I think is going to serve me for the next two years based on mm-hmm. the fact that I've done so many tests, I know what works, at that point, I'm like, well, I know the investment here. I'm going to be making a lot of money from the video I create here, so let's go and do it properly. And yeah. that's the time yeah. I'll go into the studio and get other people to film it. So my advice to a lot of people is don't even go the DSLR route mm-hmm. anymore. Um, I used to recommend it. I don't recommend it now because I think that when you're at that level and you want to create something that good, go to the professionals and just get it done. Because in a day of filming, if you're prepared, you can get so much done and it's and it's very cost effective. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I would, I would, that's my advice for a lot of people these days. Great. There you go, guys. From the expert in the industry, Mr. Tom Summer Breeze, <laughs> you, use <laughs> your smartphone and, you know, really take that one home to the bank. And he touched on the perfect, the perfect, perfect word, mm. procrastination. I know that myself and Rob have recorded many videos just because I've got the smartphone out on the tripod and we've hit record got a nice size memory card in there and we've just gone produce the videos done job done and that's the key thing getting stuff done action in your business and moving your business forward and this coupled with those success laws in video marketing that tom has given you for youtube ads you're gonna you know really hit the levels of success that you need to i I think where I want to go with this, Rob, is have you got another question? Because I kind of want to move into resources. Yeah, I've got go one on. quick question. And this is really, uh, before we go to resources, is comparisons now. Because obviously a lot of people, Tom, are moving in the, you know, Facebook ads, Facebook ads. And obviously Facebook have got their version of video ads. I want to see if there was any crossover from YouTube to Facebook video ads or if there's anything different. And just touch on the costings as well of a typical kind of, I don't know, YouTube pre-roll ad. Yeah, okay, cool. So we do uh, YouTube video ads is like our is our baby. People know us for that, and that's kind of like become our brand really um, more than anything else. But a lot of our most successful clients, we also run their Facebook video ads as well. So yeah. they often see the results we're getting with the YouTube stuff, and they're like, wow, how can we get more exposure on YouTube? And I said, well, there's a whole other platform called Facebook, which we can master as well if you like. Yeah. So it's a natural progression for a lot of our clients. And some of our clients come straight to us because they've got a referral to go straight into Facebook as well. The If you're going to create a video for YouTube, then it can quite easily be edited and and it will work very well on on Facebook as well. It's a a slightly different call to action because on Facebook, you've got a lot more text around the video itself. And so you can have the links there. And also there's a link. um, There used to be links in the videos themselves. Now, I think that's only reserved for mobile, but there's a link Mm -hmm. underneath the video. But we just say, look, hey, look, click the link or the, the we're in the call, for a call to action on a Facebook video, we'll say, hey, click the button in the video or the link in the post, and, and then that will be kind of like the, the way to call people to, to action. Um, yeah. So we just cover all bases there. And the – yeah, so the Facebook video ad will be very similar to the YouTube video ad. But bear in mind, Facebook, when you're seeing a video ad on a 
on a news feed on Facebook, yeah. when you're scrolling down, the ads will actually just start playing silently. So you're either going to want to have some text underneath with the video itself so people can read it, because yeah. a lot of people actually just watch the video silently. And so you want to have some text, almost like a, the subtitles underneath the actual mm-hmm. uh, video itself. And also you might want to have in the first couple of seconds is have something like um, silently kind of like point to the play button and have like a, a bit of text that will say, click the play button now or turn on your audio right now. Mm. Um, so you're kind of saying that to the, to the actual like live in the video itself, because then as people are scrolling through, they're like, oh, OK, yeah, I'll press play now to listen. Yeah. Um, and that means that they'll, have, they'll, be able to, they'll be able to actually hear what you're saying in the video. Um, so that kind of is a slight difference with that yeah. versus uh, with YouTube. Mm-hmm. The targeting on Facebook is very different to YouTube. So you're targeting people based on their interests on Facebook, yeah. which means we're back to the moment of stimulus. Um, so you know mm. earlier we talked about like yeah. you know, like a billboard would be there or you'll go through a life experience where you yeah. need something. Mm. On Facebook, you're advertising to people that might be interested in what you do, but it's not the right time just yet. So you almost like yeah. need to create that. You've got to bear in mind that you're going to be creating that desire and wanted people, which is a slightly yeah. tougher job yeah. um, because you've got to kind of incentivize them to be really interested. So we know they might be interested in certain, like following certain marketing gurus, for example, or they might be interested in or whatever your audience are interested in. We know they're yeah. interested in gardening, for example. Um, mm-hmm. But then we've got to spark their interest to say, hey, look, yeah. Did you know, which is a great way to start a video, by the way, did you know that if you do this, this and this, you'll achieve this result? Or, yeah. hey, look, in this video, I'm going to show you how we generated this result with our with our client. Mm-hmm. Like using a case study or a did you know video works typically very well on, on both kind of YouTube and also Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you're, but just bear in mind on Facebook, you're having to regenerate that desire yeah. Um, yeah. in order to get them back to the back to the website but it's not a huge difference to the youtube ad so you if you created a youtube ad or if you created a video for facebook the chances are that will probably work pretty well on both platforms one quick question then you know on facebook once they it's not like obviously youtube so once they click on that they're going to be paying for the ad on there's, there's no 30 second pre-roll where they, they, they can't pay facebook so once somebody's watching that video effectively the advertisers is paying for that for that for that view would i be right in saying that tom yeah so this is a this is an odd one and um and it's 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 the down to the terminology and how you phrase it um and it gets a bit geeky at this point so i don't know how much detail to go into but um let's keep it light for our listeners yeah cool okay perfect so well really the the end of like the the, the big kind of the number you want to t- take into consideration really is not necessarily the cost per view or the cost yeah. per impression and things you're more looking at saying right well how many leads did we generate and what was the cost to generate that lead right think Mm. think of uh, and maybe even not even just a lead maybe just a customer um so you want to try and keep an eye on on the bigger numbers really as soon as you go into the real detailed numbers it gets a bit confusing and you start making incorrect decisions i find So, so the reason i say it's a bit complicated sometimes is because on youtube an impression and a view is a different thing so on YouTube, an impression would be someone who's watched your video up until 30 seconds. And as soon as they watch past 30 seconds, now it's considered a view. So you're mm-hmm. only paying for that view, really. That's mm-hmm. the way they view it. Mm-hmm. And so this is really interesting because on Facebook, they used to consider anyone who watches three seconds of your video, even if it was silent, as a view. Right. Um, and before that, it would just be an impression. Now they've moved it to 10 seconds, I believe. I'm still not sure on what they consider a yeah. view. But still, when people argue like, oh, my God, look how many views I got on Facebook versus YouTube, you're kind of like, well, you actually got more impressions from Facebook, maybe. Yeah. But you didn't get yeah. more engagement and in terms right. of – Right. That's good. Mm-hmm. Nice clarity. So, yeah. So it, it's kind of like um, well, I, I saw a blog post where someone was talking about like, oh, my God, here's how many views I got on um, on Facebook and here's how many views I got on YouTube. And you're like, well, they count a view in a different way. And so you probably – like that's why I don't really care too much. I, I, those numbers are important for another reason, which I'll talk about in a second. But in terms of metrics and whether the ad campaign is profitable or not, I don't really care too much about impressions and views. I'm more interested in how much money did we spend and what was the return yeah. that we got. ROI. Mm-hmm. Exactly, yeah. Um, and the uh, the only reason I would be really interested in impressions and views 
is when it becomes more of an algorithm thing for those platforms because they'll measure how well your ad is being received and if you get a really if people are loving your ad if if you get like lots of impressions and a load of views as well so people are really consuming that video the both those platforms facebook and youtube will consider that ad as a as something that people are wanting to see and they'll give yeah. you that natural more exposure they'll kind of give you more kind of like limelight so to speak they'll, they'll allow it to be shown to more people which just gives you more like more exposure in the video itself so yes that's, that's always a useful kind of thing to know awesome guys right now you're getting a real lesson in video marketing believe you and me <laughs> tom is delivering some content yeah. right now and i think the key thing is that there's lots of things that people can learn tom do you have any resources personally that people can get hold of um you know maybe an ebook or even a video training series or anything like that that you can point people to because i think it might be useful for people to find out more from you yeah so on the um there's actually two places that um, mm-hmm. are quite useful so on my agency site which is viewability.co.uk yeah on that site we have a, a survey actually it's a it's a mm-hmm. it's, it takes about two minutes to fill out the answers about six or seven questions mm-hmm. but what it will do is it will identify identify for you whether youtube or facebook or both or maybe some more advanced strategies will be right for you so it's almost like lays down what sort of campaigns would be the best type Good. for your business Fantastic. Yeah. So it's yeah, just a few questions about your business and about where your market might be, and then it kind of we've got like it it will send you out a complete report that will be bespoke to you, and mm-hmm. it's quite a, well, it's not hugely long, but it's it'll take you fifteen minutes to read through it, but it gives you mm-hmm. loads of information, loads of data, loads of examples of videos we've created, and yeah. it just kind of gives you that map process to be like ah, I now know what Do platform it. will work and what one won't and why, so mm-hmm. to speak. So that's useful. So if people want to kind of think about getting started, that's often where I say to start. So that's one resource on Mm viewability.co.uk. The other thing on my tombreeze.com website, which is more my personal one, um, Mm -hmm. the presentation actually where you guys met me uh, at the presentation with the Frank Kern event there, Mm -hmm. there at that uh, event the it was all recorded and the whole fit thing was filmed and on tombreeze.com yeah. the video is there the whole keynote's there so you can go Good. and watch that um if you want to kind of just grab a load more information about some case studies um we talk about the andy harrington um and um it kind of like it's got everything in there as well so it kind of awesome. it lays it out nicely Great stuff, great stuff. Thanks for sharing that, Tom. Guys, go to those websites, go and opt in, get the report, get the video. Great content. Like I said, myself and Rob have learned a lot from Tom in you know, in particular at that event, and we've learned more today, I'm sure yeah, you'd agree. Absolutely. Rob. There's some real powerhouse nuggets of golden mm. diamonds. <laughs> and the summer breeze Ooh. is coming. So yeah. I know it, I know it's awesome. You know what? Like really when you you've got to listen back to yeah. this one again, guys, because there's some real, real good content. And if you are thinking about growing your business through marketing and you want to consider YouTube through AdWords and then you want to look at Facebook you know, listen to this, take notes and, you know, I think the real cool thing here is go get that report because I think that's going to be a valuable asset in your marketing mix. Mm -hmm. So where are we going with this? If people want to get in touch with you, Tom, I mean, you've mentioned two websites, how they can get in touch with you. Are you active on any social media profiles? Yeah, so I'm active on Facebook and just search for Tom Breeze and there's a very cheesy picture of me, so you can probably find me there. (laughs) So Facebook's normally the one to go for and that's kind of like more my business profile and you can contact me there if if need be. Um, But viewability.co.uk, there's like a contact form there, there's the survey there, there's loads of information there. There's even kind of more of our clients we've worked with um, and how we're getting results. There's kind of like some um, breakdown of different campaigns in there as well. So there's some really useful content there as well. But um, yeah, like, there's different ways of getting in touch with me, but Facebook or or just plain old email normally works pretty well. Good. Perfect. Thanks for sharing that. Rob, over right. to you. So Tom, we want to thank you for taking time to interview with us and Elevation Nation. And I'm sure they, with us, appreciate all those nuggets that you've just um, delivered to the audience. Yeah. Is somebody, oh, well, we've already touched on how somebody can get in touch with you, but I'm going to hand over to Mr. Street to close us out because I realize we just done something cool there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just thought just... Okay, cool. So, yeah, once again, Tom, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for all of the insights. I'm sure Elevation Nation, when you listen to this and when you mm. listen to it the first, second, and third time, I'm sure you're going to pick up lots of great You need to listen to this at least three times. Yeah. 
This is, you know, uh, I'm sure Rob's going to come up with a great, great title for this episode oh, when we put the show notes out there. But, you know, from from the guy who brought you the 22 second law of pre-roll ads, this is a phenomenal one. So I just want to leave this with mm. you. When you're considering your marketing, make sure you're looking at the numbers and the processes that are going to take you towards attaining customers. Don't get lost in the vanity of impressions or views or reach. It's all about customers and transactions in your business. Tom, it's been an absolute pleasure. I just want to say thank yep. you for your time today. So we'll catch you on the next one soon. Thank you, guys. It's been really good thank fun. Thank you, Tom. Excellent. Until next time, Elevation Nation, visit www.businessownerelevation.com and keep soaring to new and higher heights of productivity and profitability.